Here we are, paddling to the Fundy Rose. A little competition for dock space I see ahead of us. I think we'll beat it. I think we'll get a better spot. Actually, we're gonna land on the beach. And then we gotta carry all our crap up to the boat in multiple loads. And then we have to carry our crap on the boat, probably in multiple loads. And then we have to carry our crap off the boat in multiple loads. And then we gotta paddle two miles to a harbor that we hope we can leave our boats at and then carry most of our crap across town to where we'll be staying. So we still got some steps, but the Fundy Rose is like an entertainment center mecca. They got live music, a couple restaurants, a couple movie theaters. I mean, come on. And then we hope to hit the laundromat tonight and order some pizza at the laundromat and feel like tomorrow we're kind of refreshed and new with clean clothes. I might try and track down a haircut. We'll go back and clean some gear, take a nap. It's good to be good. Look at that behemoth go behind the little island. It's so massive. Fortunately going slow so we don't have to deal with the wake, but that thing is massive. By one we carried our kayaks into the cargo hold of the Fundy Rose, then we headed topside to take a view of the water from a different vantage point. is right nearby however big rock wall and fence and <laughs> big security fence so this is going to be an interesting carry to the water Like the guy in the pier said, he wouldn't want to arm wrestle me after all my paddling hours. Yep. Ready? Ready. 
Never snuck behind a building security fence to put in. This is a new one. This is definitely a new one. Yeah, I'm good. I'm just letting you lead. Here, I'm gonna come around. Okay. Remains to be seen whether this is worse than Crow or <laughs> Crow is still the winner, I think. Um okay, hold on. I hold on. Okay. You can go a little further. Okay, now I have to crawl over. I can't lift it yet, I have to, I have to go forward a little bit. Okay, I got it. Ooh, sounded worse than it was. Little twig. At least it's not slippery. Just uneven rock. It's a wobbly rock. Fudge of manga. Mosquitoes have found me, of course. Oh, my forearms are screaming. Okay. Oh. That, was, that was a rough one. Here we come into the town of Digby. Big jetty here. We're gonna go around this jetty. Shore up on a dock. And then try and find our bed B and B that we're staying at. Maybe get some dinner. I'm really lucky. Well I need to be more than lucky, I need dinner. We're gonna spend four or five days here catch up on stuff, do some cleaning, enjoy sleeping in the bed. Really kind of an extravagant time. A little bit of a celebration of how we've paddled as far as we have. It's no small feat. You look at the map that I saw on the terminal of the ferry. Woo you track some miles, spun some paddles. We've done it. See if we could find a coffee shop. I don't want to talk now. We got a coffee shop on the boat, but we'll see. It's a double break wall. Ooh -wee. Little lighthouse. It's picturesque, really, this little spot. 
big fish and lobster boats, big fishing boats. And those are big ones. Much bigger than the US versions. They must go offshore because they're going down around the end of Nova Scotia. We called ahead to the harbor masters to see if there was space on the pier in Digby where we could leave our kayaks for a couple of days. He said, indeed, yes, there was. However, failed to mention the distance that it was from the water to the dock. This made for getting out of the boats quite challenging as well as unloading them. Thank goodness for John's long arms. Really comes in handy in an instance like this. Uh, I guess our antics for the day are not quite over. We're going to have to figure out how to get uh, these beautiful kayaks up onto the dock safely. We got the pretty ladies up here. They are on the dock. After settling into our bed and breakfast, it was time to explore Digby. Mostly by filling our bellies. The scallop fishery began in Digby, Nova Scotia in the 1920s. The large tidal exchange in the Bay of Fundy causes water to continually flush over the scallops, providing food for them. The deep, cold waters give the scallops their sweet, fresh flavor. While sorting out a haircut, we met some locals, and those locals were adamant that we meet another local by the name of Remy. Remy's an avid sailor as well as a member of the Canadian Coast Guard. And he offered to take us for a sail for a day, and which we did, and it was great. We got to spend a lot of time with him talking about the local culture, the fishing industry, and just what it's like to be in Digby. He also was a great source of information for what's to come in our paddle, and where we may find landings down the coastline, uh, beaches, things to consider. Overall, it was a great experience spending a little time with Remy. And now I think these guys could be a mid-bay license. Some people fish on the other side, some people on this side, and then there's other areas down below that they fish in, yeah. and uh, St. Mary's Bay, there might be scallops down there when you cross. Now there's that red one, it's the old yeah. style. Look at the maybe wavy 
twice the width, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's a lot of boat. Yeah. They, they can go out for 10 days to keep the lobsters inside. These boats seem uh, shorter than the American versions. Stubbier. Maybe a little. Surprised to see them tied up so much. They aren't making any money. Well, the lobster season's closed. Not open yet. Yeah. And so the scallop, you have to have quota. And if you run out of quota, then you have to buy more, and people are charging more for the quotas. John decided to ferry our kayaks from the municipal pier over to the yacht club pier which was significantly lower to the water to make for loading our boats easier in the morning. an hour and a half on an old railroad track nothing more than Mexican food right. we're going for the big win here we read the reviews we've looked at the pictures we studied the map and we're on the path This is nice though, we don't have to walk on the road or the freeway or deal with cars. I think there's one section we're close to cars. This trail route is unmarked, but yet Google Maps randomly picked this route for us as walkers. They down us right. Yeah. Almost two miles in, we're still walking. We're getting closer. It looks like we have a wonderful bridge to cross here. We came from all the way over there. You probably can't see it, but there's a boat harbor over there. That's where our kayaks are. You can see the dock where our kayaks would be. We got oncoming traffic. Looks like more current than there was in Lubeck. Look over on this side. There's some decent current. All right, folks, back to working. Walking. Still walking, Katie. How long has it been? I don't even know. I don't know what the time. One hour, what? 11 minutes. So we should be there in eight minutes. And it seems fortuitous that we have found a red maple leaf, which is fitting for Canada. All we've seen at this point is bald eagles. I yes. can't explain it. <laughs> and this bright red, not on the trees. Oh, there's a couple up there. Couple. But two bright red ones. Fall is coming. And we're almost to the restaurant. We believe it's down here on the right. Katie's cramping up. It's getting all bad, folks. It's getting bad. Don't know if we're going to make it. It's getting desperate, boy. Desperate, man. 